My name is Carrie Feyerabin. I'm one of the admissions counselors at Binghamton University. Um, today we are joined by Dr. Myra Sabir, who's one of our associate professors of human development, and she's also a narrative psychologist. She earned her PhD from Cornell in human development and narrative psychology, and she's going to share with us a little bit about uh, a brief mini lecture, if you will, on um, your life story review for self-understanding. Um, so Myra, if you can take it away, uh, we'll get to hear a little bit about this and what it might be like to experience um, a brief lecture with one of our Binghamton faculty members. Well, welcome uh, to Binghamton University's uh, introduction, I guess we'll call this. As she said, my name is Myra Sabir. I am a professor in the Department of Human Development here. I'm a narrative psychologist. And I'm very happy to share with you a little bit of my, my work. I'm going to start by just telling you my, a little bit about my story, so how I got into this. So I, I was 29 years old and getting divorced and becoming a single mother. And, you know, that's a difficult time for anybody, but it was especially difficult for me because I had uh, run away from home at about 14 years old, and having this child and getting married was my way of establishing my own home or a home that I had a good bit of control over. So when it was falling apart, it was more than, it was a lot for me. I, I had the sense that I, hadn't, I didn't know what I was doing, and I, I felt like I'd gotten back to, 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 to zero. And I said, you know, I just can't keep ending up here. I have to, I have to make sense of myself and, and have a better grasp of, of what I'm doing. And so instinctively, I, went, I thought, you know, if I go back to my earliest memory and if I just slowly walk my way to the present, I can learn who I am. I can learn more about myself, maybe have a little more control or, you know, just a better sense of things. And so it was instincts. Um, I moved in with my best friend's parents. Uh, at night, after I put my daughter to bed, I would go down into their basement. They had a computer and I, would, and I just started typing. And I, as I said, I went to my earliest memory and I just started typing. And I had a lot of difficult stuff in my background. So I would come up to those difficult memories and I would write through them. But then my body, I realized that there was still so much emotion in my body. And so I thought, you know what, I'm not done with that memory. So I would go back and I would go through it again. And sometimes I would take, have to take two or three passes. And I called it wet writing because I was crying and writing, crying and writing. I was taking uh, moments apart, looking at what happened, sensing what was in my body, what that little girl was feeling, what she was thinking, what, what sense she was making of what was happening to her. And, you know, really getting what was going on with the other people in those scenes. It was just a slow process. And my best friend's mom at one point said, what are you doing in that basement? Because I was so committed to it. And I was just so every night. And then at some point I realized I was done. And when I was done, let me, I was a different person. I was, I felt free and light and whole. And I, and, and 30 years later, I've not lost that feeling. And, and as you might imagine, I was completely fascinated with what happened. I was like, what the heck was that? I mean, it was so real for me that, that it had changed me. And so that, here I am, a narrative psychologist, really doing a lot of what I did in that basement 30 years ago with other people and teaching it to students. And that's what I'm going to teach you a little bit about today. And so I titled this topic, Life Story Review for Self-Understanding, which is exactly what I did. Um, and and th this is about your most important memories, those you, you will never forget. I have a few notes on the side, so that's why I'm looking over here. But um, these are memories you'll never forget, uh, memories that had a strong impact, whether positive or negative. I tend to, I focus on the difficult memories because that's what I was doing in that basement, but it works for any memory. Uh, but these are the ones you're looking for, those that had a really strong impact on you, and you need a relaxed and quiet place, not interrupted space, you know, where you're not worried about time, just, just time for yourself, you know, just time with and for yourself. And this is a conversation between you and the younger you. So in that basement, I was literally going back to little Myra and just basically let, letting her tell me what she was feeling during those difficult events in her life, you know, letting her really do what she could not not possibly have done at the time. And, 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 and she had an ear of somebody who got her. It was me, right? <laughs> so I really got her. So that's the point. The point is for the younger you to be able to gain the attention of someone, the warm attention, the kind, non-judgmental attention of someone who gets her. And, and nobody gets her or him or they uh, better than you. So that's the point of this. So it's, it's, a, it's a private conversation. And the writing that I'm going to, to give, I'm going to teach you to in, just in these few minutes is, 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 is private writing. Nobody ever sees it but you. I never see my participants or my students writing. I just guide them through the process. So this is private writing. You're not talking to anybody, your friends, your parents, nobody. It's just you and the younger you. 
And you want to write it down. You don't just want to talk it because there's something, uh, there's, there's an added value to writing it. I use the analogy, I'm talking fast because I want to get so much in. <laughs> but I use the analogy of a conveyor belt versus a treadmill. So a treadmill that just goes round and round, it just stays in your head. You just keep reminiscing about, ruminating rather about it. But if you take the time to write it down, as I'm going to uh, sort of guide you to do today, it's like putting it on a conveyor belt and it goes farther and farther away from you, denatures it, loses a strength power you know not exactly forgotten but certainly denatured no more sort of power over you so you want to write it down um, you also want to feel your way to the truth that you want to write about you don't want to go to your head and say oh what happened no that's not what you want to do you want to you want to as i said you're going to be in a, in a space where you you have time and you're relaxed and you, and you, you can just sink back into yourself you can return to a different time you can let yourself be there again and what you're looking for is is not what's in your mind, but what's in your body. What was that little girl or boy or person feeling? What were they feeling? And that's what you're putting on the page. You're putting emotions. What That's guiding what you're writing onto the page. Um, your truth is in your emotions. That's where they are then. That's where they are now. That's where they are always. <laughs> but in this writing, that's what you're looking for, the truth that is in your emotions. Um, and you're not judging those emotions that you just, you're just transferring it onto the page with don't even, don't even try to analyze or anything. Just look at what you see, see what you feel, put it on the page. I'm going to say more about that in a minute. Um, and you're going to learn something from that process. And that's all you want to do is honestly put it there and see what you're going to learn from it because you're going to learn quite a bit, right? So you're not judging it. You're simply learning from uh, seeing, it, seeing it again. I also always say think few and think small. So what I want you to do is make a movie out of a moment. So um, uh, I'm going to give you an example. So um, on the day when I left home, I, 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 it's like everybody in my family knew I wasn't coming back. So everybody sort of rushed to the front door and I heard my mom kind of whimper, come back, my, you know, it was breaking her heart. But then my dad was saying, let her go in this really hard voice. And I didn't know until I wrote this down that that little girl looked back to see her father's face. She wanted to know if his voice, met, if his face matched his voice. And I did. And I didn't know that, though, until I wrote it down. So, so but, but I took that, that moment, hearing my mom's longing and, and hearing my dad's, I don't know what emotion that was, but rejection. That just that was like pages. So you want to you want to make a movie out of a moment. You want to slow it way down so that you can really uh, be with the, the younger you in that moment. And so she's no longer alone there. And I could say so much more about that. I won't right now. This is I think you get it. Uh, so you want I think few and think small. Think of an important memory and then slow it down. Slow it way down and reproduce it that way. I, I, I say IMAX the memory. So you've been to an IMAX movie. Everybody has, you know what I mean. So it's big. It's, it's, a, it's a surround sound. You're in it again, right? And so that's, that's what you want to do with these memories. I'm going to show you how, don't worry. Uh, but you have to IMAX the memories because that's, you've got to get the details. You've got to get like that look on my dad's face. It was a, it was a, 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 a split second of knowing, you know, my heart just sank into the ground. But I, didn't, I couldn't have known that until I went back and let this girl blow up what happened and look at it in detail and really get what, it, what impact it had on her. So you want to IMAX. Again, I'm doing difficult memories, but this would work for a, a not difficult memory as well. I'm going to read you a very brief example of what I mean by IMAXing it. Um, so this is an example in, in a, the Life Writing Workbook, which is a book. But here is an example of me. I'm going to read. I'm just going to read it. This is a this is a this is a report of an experience, and then I'm going to write an IMAX or or a showing of an experience. Okay. I went to the store for bread, and the shelves were completely empty. I forgot it was Easter Sunday. So that's a report. That's a telling. Okay. Here it is again. My eyes were still half closed as I made my way down the bread aisle. Without even thinking, I reached for the baguettes, but my fingers landed on a cold metal shelf. Then I heard the church bells, Easter decorations hung from the ceiling. Now, I didn't tell you that I went to the store. I didn't tell you that it was Easter. I didn't tell you that, it, you know, that there was no bread. I just said I, my, my, I reached for it. It was just a cold metal shelf. 
And if you look at the, and I, I'm tempted to read it again, but I'm afraid my time will run out. But if you were to think about the second one, think of how much more you know. You, this guy says his eyes were half closed, or she, I, I said guy, who knows. But um, you know, maybe it's evening, maybe it's morning, maybe they just got out of bed. Probably morning, it's bread. It's a, it's a neighborhood, they're church bells. It's, it's, not a, it's not a five, it's not a 7-Eleven, right? Baguettes metal shelves, Easter decorations. It's, it's, you know, maybe a middle class. I mean, there's so much from the image that you will never get from a report. So you must trust me when I say, just get the image on the page in this IMAX full bodied fashion. Just do that. You'll thank me. <laughs> it works. Um, so, um, so the things that you will get from this IMAX image that you will not get from a report, and what you want out of this is, you want to know what happened, very specifically, my dad's face matched his voice. Um, you, want, you want to know how it felt to the, to, the, to the little person then. Not you now, not the 20 year old, not the 18 year old, but the little girl, little boy, or little person. What did she feel? And you'll know that if you slow it down and IMAX it, and what did it mean? What meaning did she or he or they make of it? Those are what you're gaining, getting out of your story, okay? Last tip before I give you a, 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 a is, is you have to precisely identify those emotions. You can't, so for example, let's say you say, I was so mad I punched a hole in the wall, when really you were disappointed, right? And if you, if you, get, if you say mad, you missed your opportunity for understanding what that little girl or boy or person felt. So you really have to precisely identify what she or he was feeling. In my work, I give uh, my students and my participants an emotions list, and it shows primary, secondary, and tertiary, first, second, and third level emotions, so that you can see those finer distinctions between one, you know, word that might label an emotion and another. But that's a that's a skill in this that I teach. But you have to do that. You have to precisely identify what that little person was feeling. Um, and in my case, if, if it's about healing, you have to be willing to go to the difficult places. And I, uh, there's, a, there's something in this we call, I call uh, a displacement effect. There's a, a renowned psychologist, Karen Horney, who I, when I, I had done all this stuff, you know, sort of instinctively. And when I went to college and university, it was so gratifying to find this almost the exact same understanding of it. It's safe self-analysis. If you want to know more about that, I'm Professor Myra Severe in Human Development reach out to me. I'm going to give you a little bit of homework and then I'm going to wrap up. What I want you to do is try this IMAX thing, right? And what I want you to do is think about if you've ever had a best friend. Most of us have had a best friend. Some people haven't. If you haven't, you might want to write what it's like to have never had a best friend because if you know you've never had one, you know what a best friend is, right? You know you've never had that. You can write that. But if you've had a best friend, I want you to identify the moment when you know you, you knew you could trust that person. When did you know that this was a special, this was not just an ordinary person coming into my life. This is something special. When did you know you could trust that person? Sit with yourself, go to that place. Remember the moment when you knew you could trust that person and then I max out on a page. And that'll begin to give you a sense of how you really can go inside yourself and know what's important and all of that. And I think my time is up and I really appreciate the time to talk to you and share my work. Hope to see you at Thank you so much, Myra. <laughs> um, but let's um, address a couple questions um, before you leave. Um, what are some of the highlights that you might want to share about the Human Development Program, about um, CCPA, or other, um, other things that you could highlight about the program and what the professors and the faculty like you do for our students, what your favorite parts are about, about the program and about Binghamton? Yeah. When I, when I uh, saw a department, it's a, the whole college is a social justice-focused college. But this was a human development, a social justice focused department of human development. I thought, what? Wow, how could that possibly be? I mean, I was excited that there was a place where, where people were connected. Because in my, in, in developmental psychology, I'll use the word maturity, emotional maturity. As we uh, evolve in um, emotional maturity, all these biases, all of these isms like racism and sexism and all those things, they go away. You don't need them anymore. You know, you only need them when you're emotionally immature. And so when I saw human development and social justice in the same sentence, I was totally excited and I'm so happy to be there. I can't believe there's a place like this. Everybody in the college is social justice focused. Everybody in our department is social justice focused. It's not just about most like, I could, you, you stop me when I need to. No, but, you're good. Okay, but uh, we have, but we're not just all psychologists. We have sociologists, we have anthropologists, we have, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an eclectic group of uh, scholars 
all focused on the same thing. And it's a very exciting place to be. And I think the students, I know the students would tell you the same thing. I get lots of notes. We all get lots of notes from our students. We're granted. That's great. Thank great. You. Um, and another thing that I don't know, maybe you could speak to a little bit, what kind of um, projects do your students do that you think may have the most impact or what, what are the, some of the ways that um, Binghamton engages within the community, um, speaking about that social justice that you might have a hand in or, or ways that you can see when you're working with your students? Yeah, I'm just going to speak about my own course, but uh, sure. there are a lot of, uh, in, a lot, our students go into the community a lot. Their capstone is almost all you know, community or engagement work. But my own work, I teach a course called Optimal Aging. And, um, well, actually this happens in my narrative psych class. I do teach Optimal Aging. I'm a gerontologist too. I wear a gerontologist hat. But in my narrative psychology class, students have to interview a well elder. They have to, and usually we ask if it's somebody to make it somebody local. If they can't, then they'll go to their own grandparents or somebody. But they have to interview a well elder. They don't do life writing because it gets a, a bit intense. But there is a, they have a protocol for allowing that older person to share their story with the younger person. And I don't know if you know how important that is to older adults, but it is a life stage need for them to tell their story. And the students, they just, you know, I don't know how they think about it before they do it, but after they do it. They're just, you know, they have lots of wonderful stories and they make these friends with people that they never thought they could be really you know, ex excited about. And sometimes we bring the elder into the class at the end of, end of the class period of the semester. That's, that's what I have to do. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Um, this has been so wonderful. I thank you so much for sharing the story. I know I learned a lot and we are certainly going to share this on our website for anyone who may have missed it. Um, they can always reach out to us or um, reach out to um, Myra, I guess, if you have any questions. Um, but we really appreciate you joining with us and hopefully our students will kind of get, get to know a little bit more about um, the HDEV program, CCPA, and just the wonderful types of professors such as yourself that we have here on campus. So thank you so much for joining us, Maya, Myra. Thank you for having me.